Residents of New Haven in St. Andrew took to the streets on Tuesday protesting the alleged killing of 17-year-old Devin Hall by police officers in the early hours of the morning. The incident, which reportedly occurred around 4 a.m., has ignited widespread anger within the community, with many accusing the police of unjustly taking the young man's life. According to the residents, Hall was shot near Corville Gardens on Washington Boulevard. They further allege that the police later dumped his body at the Duhaney Park Market, which has since been declared an active crime scene. The community has expressed deep frustration, claiming that the police are attempting to cover up the circumstances surrounding Hall's death. Despite efforts by law enforcement to disperse the crowd, residents have remained in the area, steadfast in their demand for justice and transparency from the authorities. As of now, the Constabulary Communications Network, the police's information branch, has not issued an official report on the incident. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has urged parents to motivate their children to excel in mathematics, emphasizing its importance in preparing them for a tech-driven corporate world. In a recent address, he highlighted that proficiency in math is not just about solving equations, but is essential for developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills. These abilities, he noted, are crucial for success in today's rapidly evolving job market where technology and innovation are key. The Prime Minister called on parents to support their children's education in this vital subject as it will open doors to numerous opportunities in the future. Parents, please, do not place in the minds of the students a psychological fear of mathematics or anything technical. Encourage them, even if you are not mathematically inclined, encourage them. It is the way of the world. If Jamaica is to move from a low wage, low productivity, low growth economy into a high wage, high growth, high productivity economy, investing in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is critical. Encourage your children in that path. Not to the exclusion of their natural creativity in other areas, but it is important that they are able to negotiate the world in which they will live. Essentially, parents, the world that we inhabit will be led by people who create technology and innovate and those who consume it. It is those who create it, who create the value that will have the wealth. And those who are constantly consuming it, you will be one step just above poverty. If you want your household, your country, to raise its level of production, to break the cycle of poverty, then we must become the creators of technology. And to become the creators of technology, the St. Anne police are searching for the person who shot and killed a man and injured another in Mahogany Beach in the parish on Tuesday night. Dead is Shane Matadine, otherwise called King, 45-year-old of Norbrook Acres Drive St. Andrew and Mahogany Beach in St. Anne, while the injured is a 26-year-old of an Old Harbor St. Catherine address. Reports are that about 10 p.m., Residents near Mahogany Beach heard explosions and called the police. Both men were found suffering from gunshot wounds and were transported to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where Matadine was pronounced dead and the other admitted. In a recent video posted on her social media pages, Lisa Hanna, the Member of Parliament for St. Anne's Southeast, addressed the growing issue of skin bleaching. 
Hannah highlighted the negative effects of the practice, emphasizing that it not only poses significant health risks, but also could cause health issues for the people around you. She urged young Jamaicans to embrace their natural beauty, stressing that the harmful chemicals in bleaching products can lead to long-term skin damage and other serious health issues. If you bleach or know someone who is, you might want to stop and hear what I'm saying right now. You see, in 2022, researchers analyzed over 100 popular skin lightening or whitening products that are being sold online for mercury. And they found that almost half of them, or one in two of those products, contained mercury above legal limits. You see, as a heavy metal, mercury is highly toxic to humans, and it can cause severe health problems. Yet mercury chloride is being used as a skin and mucous membrane irritant to suppress the formation of melanin for lighter skin tones. This, this beautiful color that everybody that are using skin bleaching creams are trying to get rid of. And inorganic mercury toxicity can lead to nephrotic syndrome, a kidney disorder. It can lead to decreased renal output. Sometimes it even leads to renal failure, which is essentially kidney failure and other severe health effects. I bet you didn't know that. And these effects, once you get them, affect other parts of your nervous system, your digestive and immune systems, other organs such as your lungs, your kidneys, yes, your skin and your eyes. Worse, if you take this route of mercury exposure with your skin absorption and inhalation of mercury vapors, it's not only harmful to yourself, but it's harmful to those who are around you, especially in your household. And too much of, of melanin pigment, if you remove it, then guess what? You, you start to get a raw face, a raw skin. And once you get exposed to UV rays from sunlight, it's actually a risk factor for all kinds of skin cancer. Yet globally, women of color in every region of the world are spending more than $8 billion US dollars on bleaching creams annually. They've created a thriving global business in these skin lightening creams and injectables. Yes, injectables. People are actually injecting skin whitening into their bodies. And so close to $9 billion US dollars was spent in 2020, 2.3 billion of, of that alone was spent in the United States market. And the global market size for skin lightening products will reach close to $16.8 billion by 2030. But you're buying these products. And according to the World Health Organization, a lot of women in Africa are buying them. 77% of the women in Nigeria use skin lightening products, the world's highest percentage. And then they speak about other countries in Africa. You see, in Asia, this number is around 40%. For example, in 2018, there was a study done in Mumbai in India, and it found that 54% of the respondents had either used skin whitening products at some point, and 38% were actually using them. On one of my trips to Lagos in Nigeria, I visited, I wanted to see for myself, one of the primary manufacturing plants that made these skin lightening creams. And the names, the names puzzled me of some of the products, the labels on them, because I saw, I saw products called So White, So Lovely. Maxi Skin White Whitenizer Lotion, Sparkling White Whitenizer Lotion, Eskimo White. Last year, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration in Nigeria declared the use of bleaching creams in that country as a severe national health emergency. Here in Jamaica, I see so many of our men and our women tearing up their skin using harsh creams that some of them even create for themselves. And when you look at their faces, it looks pink, raw, as if they were severely burnt because their entire top layer of their face, their bodies, their legs have been removed. And many of them have to stay covered with these long sleeve socks, um, long sleeve shirts, socks, um, broad hats in the middle days. Some of them, it looked like they were going to burn up because they can't expose themselves to the sun. Why? Because they, you are burning, they feel sizzling. And some of the bleaching cream mix-ups that they create at home, these at-home concoctions, um, they use bases like chemical hair relaxers. Chemical hair relaxers that permanently must strain hair color, like your hair curls. Oh, you can use that on your, on your, on your, on your skin. And other chemical creams and products. And these, these hazardous things that they're putting to mix up to, to get bleaching fast, because they have to bleach fast, they don't realize that they're actually harming themselves, sometimes permanently. 
So while our black brothers and sisters sometimes convince themselves of the sociocultural and upward social economic mobility um, that they will get from lightening their skin, they must also seek the knowledge of how some of these hazardous chemical reagents that they apply daily to their skin and inhaling are harming the health of themselves and those are around them. And they should also understand that the skin, their skin, is the largest organ in their body. The skin is called the integumentary system and forms a physical barrier between the external and your internal environment. It protects and maintains your body from infections and injuries caused by externalities. It's your body's coat of armor. It's your body's first line of defense against viruses, bacteria, and other microbes. And so if you're tearing away that protection, what do you think is gonna happen? Because your skin shields your body from harmful light and other, it protects also and regulates your body temperature. So if you're distorting that organ, I bet you didn't know it was an organ, it's your largest organ, you're destroying your cells. And so for those of you who are dying to be white by using these chemicals, maybe you should consider for one moment that in dying to be white, you're actually killing yourself in that bid and may kill others around you. So for more information, go back and read my article, Dying to be White. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, tragedy struck on the Salem Main Road in St. Anne when a violent collision claimed the life of Daniel McFarlane, a resident of Rio Bueno Trelawney. The 4 a.m. crash, which involved McFarlane's white Toyota Mark X, left the vehicle engulfed in flames, sealing his fate in a horrifying blaze. According to reports, McFarlane was driving along the roadway when his car collided with another vehicle, triggering the fiery explosion. The impact left McFarlane trapped inside, unable to escape the inferno. Despite the desperate efforts of first responders, he succumbed to his injuries at the scene, with his body bearing the marks of the intense heat and collision. Senior Superintendent Dwight Powell, head of the St. Anne Police, confirmed that speeding played a significant role in the fatal crash. The force of the collision, combined with the high speed, turned the once ordinary drive into a deadly disaster. As the morning sun rose over St. Anne, the charred remains of McFarlane's vehicle served as a stark reminder of the dangers that can lurk on the roadways. The police continue to investigate the circumstances surrounding the crash urging drivers to exercise caution and heed the speed limits to prevent further tragedies. The body of an unidentified woman was discovered with gunshot wounds on Duke Street in Falmouth, Trelawney, on Tuesday morning. The grim discovery was made after residents reported hearing gunfire and alerted the authorities. Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton head of the Trelawney Police, confirmed the incident to the local media. Upon arrival, officers found the woman's body lying in a pool of blood bearing multiple gunshot wounds. Milton indicated that the victim is believed to be a night worker involved in offering special services for money as the area is known for such activities. He noted that the police have been focusing their efforts on Seaboard Street a known gathering spot for night workers, leading some to relocate to other areas like Duke Street to continue their trade. The investigation is ongoing as authorities work to identify the victim and determine the circumstances surrounding her death. Location to her family and community, Rita Marley is a living legend and her journey continues to inspire us all. 